hard money lenders, no credit checks? We're gonna talk all about this, guys. Hard money lenders and credit checks and what you need to know about this. Thank you for being with me today and thank you for this question. If you've got a question like this, you wanna have me answer, type it in the comments below. Say, Ryan, just answer this question or just ask Ryan and I'd be happy to put a video together like this for you and for all my other subscribers. Thanks for being a subscriber. Okay, let's talk all about this because this can get uh, a bit interesting when it comes to hard money lenders. You see, first off, we probably need to talk about the difference between hard money lenders and traditional lenders. You see, hard money is not hard to get. Hard money is actually easy to get. But the difference is hard money lenders are lending on the hard or tangible assets asset um, rather than on the individual. So a hard money lender is looking at the asset they're lending on, i.e. the property, and they're saying, if I had to take this property back, would I still get my money back and maybe even make a little bit of money? And if the answer to that question is yes, it's probably a deal that a hard money lender wants to do. So that's the difference where you're, if you're going to the bank to Chase or uh, uh, to uh, Wells Fargo or to one of the major banks, they're actually not necessarily looking at the property. Now, yes, they wanna make sure the property will appraise for what they're lending. But if you think about it, if the bank lends $250,000 and the appraisal comes in for $255,000, if that bank has to foreclose and take the property back, they're gonna lose some money on it because they're gonna have to pay agent fees and they're gonna have to clean the property up and they're gonna have to pay attorney fees and all this kind of stuff. So they're actually gonna lose money on that, probably twenty to $50,000 of a loss. So the way that they insulate themselves is they look at your job history. They look at your credit score. They look at how much money you make. They look at your debt to income ratio, your other expenses. They look at the probability of you being able to repay pay that loan is basically what they're looking at. And then as long as the property's worth about what they're lending, they're able to go forward with that. And the reason is, is because most people, the vast majority of people, when you do those checks are actually able to pay their loan. And it's a minority, less than a few percent of people that are going to run into problems with paying their loan because they've done those checks. Now, so hard money lenders are saying, I'm lending on the asset, not necessarily the individual. So some hard money lenders may say, I don't need to do a credit check, but most hard money lenders are gonna, even if they don't wanna do a credit check, are gonna wanna look at a few things. Let's jump over to the whiteboard here. So the one thing that we're gonna wanna make sure as a hard money lender, this is collections, okay? So a collection, let's just talk about this. A collection is basically where you owed someone money. You did not pay them the money and they went in front of a judge and the judge says, yes, you can go after these people, um, which is that is called a judgment. And with that judgment, it can be in collections before or after the judgment, but basically somebody's coming after and saying, you owe us money. Now, these judgments can actually attach to the new property that you're purchasing, um, and they can go against those in lots of cases. So a title company is also gonna be checking for judgments, but most hard money lenders are gonna run a credit check to make sure you don't have any judgments or collections. The other thing they're gonna be looking for is bankruptcies. Because if you just recently filed a bankruptcy just in the last uh, few months, that can come back up. So you're typically going to have to be 12 months out of a bankruptcy um, of a discharge or a dismissal when it comes to a bankruptcy. But most hard money lenders are saying, I'm looking at collections, I'm looking at judgments, and I'm looking at bankruptcy. If you don't have these things, most hard money lenders are going to say, yeah, we'll go ahead and give you a loan, even if you have poor credit scores. But I have to tell you, if your credit's in the 400s and you're having a problem making your, your payments, if you're stiffing like 7-Eleven and bouncing checks there, and that shows up, that's going to be a concern to the hard money lender, even though they are an asset-based lender, because it goes to the integrity of the individual. So lots of times what they're going to say is, well, you know, we'll still do it, but we're going to charge you more in interest. We're going to charge, maybe we're at 15%, we're going to charge you 17%. So that's what you've got to be. So most hard money lenders are going to use your credit uh, reporting how they price the loan. Because they're gonna say, we take on more risk if you're doing these things. We'll still do the loan where a traditional lender would say, no way, we're not gonna do that loan. So it's kind of like this. If you don't have the collections, judgments, or bankruptcies, you're gonna be able to get a hard money loan, okay? But if you have horrible credit, you're gonna pay more to get that loan. So um, 
If you're enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel out so I can provide free content like this to you and I love doing it. So now let's talk about another scenario. What if you find yourself having um, these collections or judgments or bankruptcies? How do you go about actually doing a deal if you're in that situation? Well, if you have poor credit, you can still get a deal, but you're going to pay more for it. If you have judgments or collections um, or in a bankruptcy, that's going to be much harder. So how do we go about doing something like that? Well, let's talk about it. There's a few things that you can look at doing. One is wholesaling. So if you're going to wholesale a property, what you're actually doing is putting a house under contract, let's say for $100,000. Um, then you're going and finding a new buyer that wants to buy it from you. You are marking the price up, let's say you mark it up $10,000, and you sell it to him for $110,000. What happens in this is he pays you $10,000, he takes over the contract, and he buys the house for $100,000. With this, you're really about finding good deals. And there are some ways to do this, and I've got some videos on wholesaling that you can check out. But that's something you can do even if you have the judgments, if you have the bankruptcy, that type of stuff, that's a way that you can actually do some of these deals. And there's multiple ways to structure that. The other one you can do is you can do a business partner. And the idea with a partner is you can do a partnership where you're using their credit, um, but maybe you're the ones that goes and finds the property or you're the one that puts in the time and the effort, but then they use their credit to make those things possible where you're actually doing a joint venture or a business partnership. So those are some things that you need to look at. Now, if you'd like to know more about all of this, you can check it out. I wrote a book, How to Get More Money You Can Ever Handle. I'll send you the e-copy of that book if you text me your email address to 435-294-0433. I'll send you an e-copy absolutely for free. I've also got a video on what are the pros and cons of getting hard money loans. I'll put that on the screen for you to check out as well as a blog, how to buy real estate with no money down and bad credit. You're gonna wanna check that one out as well, guys. Remember, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already and make it a very profitable day. Bye for now.